Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Alexandra Brown. I'm a board certified dermatologist. Retinoids are some of the most studied and effective ingredients in skincare, but knowing where to start can be very confusing. There's retinol, retinol, adapalene, tretinoin, tazeratine, and they all have different strengths, names, and different purposes. So in today's video, I wanna walk you through the main types of retinoids, what sets them apart, and how do you find the one that makes sense for your skin? So let's get into it. What are really retinoids? Retinoids are a type of vitamin A derivative. They speed up cell turnover. They help boost collagen production. They normalize how skin cells grow and how they shed. They're among the most well-studied and effective ingredients we have for both anti-aging and acne management. The main difference between retinoid types is how directly they deliver retinoic acid, which is the active form that interacts with your skin's receptors. Over-the-counter options like retinol and retinol require conversion steps in the skin before they become active, while prescription forms such as tretinoin are already in that active state. And there are pluses and minuses to both. In general, the fewer conversion steps a retinoid needs, the more potent and faster acting it tends to be, but it also means that it can be a little bit more irritating, especially if your skin barrier isn't really prepared for it. So when deciding which product is right for you, you wanna keep three things in mind. One is the strength and speed of activity of the retinol. Next is their, your tolerability, and then whether they are available over the counter or by prescription. So let's think of this as like a retinoid ladder or the pyramid, if you will, where we're gonna start on the bottom from the gentlest and work our way up to the most potent retinoid. All right, starting at the very bottom of this pyramid, let's think about retinal esters. These are things like retinal palmitate and retinal propionate. Those are the ingredients you're going to find on the back of your bottle. They are the mildest form of vitamin A. They're often found in moisturizers or these starters for anti-aging products. They require multiple conversion steps in the skin before becoming active, which means they work really, really gradually. So you're going to get really slow, subtle improvement in texture and tone, but also minimal irritation. So this is going to be best for really sensitive skin or anyone just beginning with vitamin A and wanting a really gentle introduction. A great example of product in this category is A313. This is a pomade. It's a classic French pharmacy product that contains retinal esters only. There's no pure retinol or retinol in it. It's now available at Ulta. It used to be only overseas if you're in the United States. It's really gentle, beginner-friendly retinoid. It uses vitamin A ester, which is uh, used instead of the pure retinol. It gives you still that smooth texture and it still enhances radiance and will help support gradual skin renewal. It's more of a thicker emollient ointment base, so it's going to help with some of the irritation or dryness if you are somebody who's really sensitive to retinols. The key ingredients are the retinol palmitate and tocopherol or vitamin E. The next one in the pyramid of potency, if you will, is the retinol. And this is the most common over-the-counter form. It is converted to retinol and then retinoic acid. And retinoic acid is your tretinoin, which is your most potent form. So if you look at it, it goes retinol esters, then retinol, then retinol, then tretinoin or retinoic acid. So retinol is the most common over-the-counter form of vitamin A, and for a good reason. It's backed by decades of research showing improvement in fine lines, uneven texture, and overall skin tone. Once applied, retinol gradually converts to retinaldehyde, and then that converts to retinoic acid, which is the active form that stimulates collagen production and cell renewal. So compared to retinol esters that we just talked about, this is one step closer to the active form. But because it's less direct than prescription forms like tretinoin, retinol tends to be gentler and better tolerated. Results are gonna be more gradual, typically over several months of consistent use, but the long-term benefits are really well documented. Retinols are gonna be best for like mild photo aging, uneven texture, really early fine lines, or anyone looking for preventative anti-aging step in their routine. A perfect example of a product recommendation in this category is something that you guys are not gonna be surprised by. I've recommended it a million times over and over again, and that's the Rock Retinol Correction Deep Wrinkle Night Cream. This is formulated with that pure retinol. It works overnight to help reduce fine lines and deep wrinkles. It's non-greasy, it's super hydrating, making it really great starter retinol for mature skin. It's clinically proven to show visible improvements in about 12 weeks. The key ingredients here are the rock retinol and the squalene. Another recommendation in this category is the Olay Regenerist Retinol 24-Hour Night Moisturizer. 
This is a dermatologist's favorite drugstore option for introducing retinol into your routine. It has this blend of retinol and retinol propionate, which provides both immediate and gradual vitamin A activity for like steady results with low irritation. The formula is completely fragrance-free, non-greasy, and deeply hydrating, making it really great pick for really dry or sensitive skin. The key ingredients here are the retinol and retinol propionate, also contains niacinamide or vitamin B3 and panthenol or vitamin B5. All right, guys, let's move up a little bit more from the retinol, move up into that pyramid to retinol, sometimes called retinaldehyde. Um, this is a one metabolic step away from retinoic acid, which is your active form. So that means that it's gonna work a little bit faster than the retinol, which we just talked about. In general, this is still really well tolerated. Uh, some studies have shown that retinol can improve elasticity, wrinkles, and uneven tone while causing less irritation than the prescription tretinoin. It also happens to have a little bit of a mild antibacterial property, which is going to make it especially helpful for that acne prone or combination skin. Retinol that hides are best for those who have tolerated retinol, but they want more visible results in texture or fine lines or breakouts without jumping straight into the prescription. Retinaldehydes do come in different percentages, so you always wanna start with the lower one. If you've never used this before, start with the lower percentage, two to three nights a week. You wanna apply it to completely dry skin, not damp skin. Applying retinol to damp skin really just increases potency, not really efficacy, and when you have increased potency, there's higher risk of irritation. So wash your face, let your skin dry completely, and then apply a pea size amount to your entire face. You never want to spot treat. And when you run out of your lower strength, let's say like 0.05, move up to the higher one, like 0.1. And because retinol works a little bit more efficiently, just a little bit faster than the retinol, you may notice improvement in maybe four to eight weeks with consistent use. This is compared to 12 weeks with the retinol. So let's go over some product recommendations in this category, because I know you guys want these. The first one here is the Aven Retinol 0.1% Intensive Cream. It has that retinol they hide, which is a next generation vitamin A that's one conversion step away from the retinoic acid. And it's a little bit faster than the traditional retinol, but not as irritating as the prescription tretinoin. It is clinically shown to reduce fine lines, improve texture, and enhance radiance in as little as four weeks. It's also encapsulated for that gradual release to minimize any irritation. So it's ideal for like mature or menopausal skin. It does come in multiple strengths. So make sure you start the lower one first when you finish your bottle, up the strength up a little bit. The key ingredients here are the retinaldehyde and hyaluronic acid, also glycerin and vitamin E. And my other recommendation in the retinaldehyde category has to be by far the Medicaid Crystal Retinol, the three, six, and 10. This is stabilized retinol formula available in progressive strengths, allowing you to kind of ladder it up yourself as your skin builds tolerance. Uh, it's known for its elegant hydrating texture, fast results without excessive irritation. It's often described as that sweet spot between the retinol and the tretinoin. The key ingredient is also the encapsulated retinaldehyde, which is one conversion step away from the retinoic acid. It also contains hyaluronic acid to help hydration and plumping, vitamin E and glycerin and shea butter to help maintain some of the hydration with the retinol. All right, back to our pyramid, we're going even up to the next stronger one, and this is adapalene. Adapalene is very different from what we talked about so far. It is a synthetic retinoid that normalizes cell turnover and reduces inflammation. It was originally developed for acne, but it can also help with texture and post-acne marks. Of note, adapalene 0.1% used to be only prescription, but about maybe 10 years ago or so, went over the counter. So now 0.1% adapalene is over the counter, but 0.3% adapalene still remains prescription. This is at least in the United States. Adapalene is best for like oily, acne prone, or congested skin. You again, same application, you wanna use a pea size amount, let, wash your face at night, let it dry completely, take that pea size, apply it to your whole face, moisturize on top. There's a couple of brands here that are used often. Different gel has the 0.1 adapalene. It's a retinoid that helps prevent clogged pores, calm inflammation, fade post acne marks and spots over time, but it also helps work deep in the skin to treat and prevent some of the breakouts. And just like all the other retinols and retinoids, it can increase sun sensitivity, so you always wanna make sure you wear SPF in the morning. I love different gel for persistent breakouts, hormonal acne, acne prone skin, or maybe even like combination to oily skin. It is a little bit more potent than the retinoids we talked about earlier in the video, so make sure you only use a pea size amount. Only start two to three nights per week for maybe three to four weeks. 
moisturize on top. If you have no peeling irritation, you can increase that frequency to five to seven nights a week. But if you're developing irritation, try adding a moisturizer underneath your Adapalene gel to kind of buffer it a little bit. My other recommendation for brand in the Adapalene Point One category is definitely the La Roche Posay Effaclar. This is similar formula to Adapalene from Different Gel, but it's a little bit gentler base with that soothing thermal water from the La Roche Posay. Moving up in our pyramid again, let's talk about tretinoin. Tretinoin, also known as retinoic acid, is the only prescription retinoid. It's also known as Retin-A. A lot of you call it Retin-A, but that is the original brand name. It's considered the gold standard for anti-aging and acne due to decades of clinical data. I have some patients who are in their 70s and 80s right now, and they have been using this since 1980s, so that's like 40 years. And I'll tell you, their skin looks amazing. Some of these women have only used tretinoin and sunscreen and nothing else. No fancy peptides and no exosomes, literally tret and sunscreen and their skin is pure perfection. Tretinoin works faster and more predictably than OTC forms, but it's also more irritating. So it's best for like moderate to advanced photo aging, hyperpigmentation, uh, persistent acne or OTC resistant acne, or if you're somebody who has really tolerant and oily skin. It is extremely, extremely important to start only two to three nights a week. Only use a pea size amount. I actually love buffering the tretinoin with the moisturizer underneath. So after washing the face at night, I will apply moisturizer, let that dry, then a pea size amount of tretinoin, dot it, connect the dots, making sure I don't get too close to the corners of the nose or the eyes. The reason for the eyes is because, yes, tretinoin can help build collagen there. However, if you have really dry eyes, which I do, or you have rosacea, which I do, the eye dryness can get worse with tretinoin, and it's just not worth it when you have perfectly good retinol eye creams. Some of the common prescription brands for generic tretinoin are things like Ultrano Lotion. This is the 0.05%. It's a little bit newer, hydrating formula, really well tolerated. I do have this prescription. I like it. It spreads really nice. Another one is Retin-A Microgel. It's a microsphere version that releases gradually to reduce irritation. I've used it in the past, loved it. And then there's your go your standard tretinoin, which is generic. It comes in 0 0.025, 0 0.05, and 0.1%. It's effective, it's pretty affordable. If your insurance doesn't cover it, you can just look up the GoodRx app and make sure you get it for cash price. Uh, some of these pharmacies, if your insurance price, for example, is like $80, you can ask what the cash price is and they use your GoodRx app, it might be cheaper. And of note, these tubes are pretty good size. They come anywhere from 20 to 45 milligram size. And if you're only using pea size amount, they can last you several months. And back to our pyramid, at the top of it is the tizeratine. This is the strongest topical retinoid. It's available only by prescription, at least in the United States. It is extremely effective for acne, photo damage, even psoriasis, but it can be very drying. So it's really best for really experienced retinoid users or those who haven't responded to tretinoin. Just like with the tretinoin, you want to use the lowest Tazeratine or Tazerac prescription, it comes as low as 0.045% lotion, and you also want to try and buffer it. So if you have oily skin and you're already using this, it doesn't irritate you, more power to you. But if you have really sensitive skin, buffering it and doing a retinol sandwich, we'll talk about that in a minute, could be very beneficial. Some of the prescription examples that have the Tazeratine are Araslo lotion. This is the 0.045%. It's a little bit more elegant, kind of hydrating base, a little bit easier to tolerate than some of the older gels. And then there's your generic Tazerac cream. It comes in 0.05 and 0.1%. This comes in a cream and a gel version. The gel is going to be a little bit more alcohol-based, easier to spread, but a little bit more drying. So cream might be better for beginners. But again, all of these Tazerac cream or gels are best for really tolerant skin. So you know all this, there's your pyramid and you're like, I still don't know where to start. Here's like your guideline. If you're a beginner, you wanna start with retinol or adapalene. If you have really sensitive or let's say rosacea prone skin, I would pick retinol or one of those encapsulated retinol formulas. If you have acne, you gotta go with adapalene. If you're not responding to adapalene, get a prescription for tretinoin. And if you have texture or fine lines you want to tackle, I would pick retinol or tretinoin. But if you're an advanced user and you've done this for a long time, you have really oily skin, tazeratine is probably your jam. And let's say you picked one of these up and you're going to start it regardless of which one you picked up, retinoids can be irritating. 
They're one of the most powerful evidence-backed ingredients in dermatology, but choosing the right one is all about matching like your skin tolerance and goals and which retinol does that fit with and not chasing the highest strength or whatever the trend is. So you always want to start slow, moisturize consistently, and give it time. I always recommend starting with a retinol sandwich. Make sure you check out my retinol irritation video below that's going to talk more about this. But retinol sandwich is, in short, is a method where after washing your face, instead of applying retinol directly to your skin, you apply moisturizer first to help buffer out some of the irritation that you could potentially experience with the retinol. And then you apply your retinol, you only use a pea size amount, cover your whole face, avoiding the eyes and the nose area, and then you apply moisturizer again. So you're really sandwiching that retinol between two layers of a moisturizer in an attempt to help minimize some of the irritation. After sunscreen, you guys, retinol is number one aging product. So not only does it treat your fine lines and wrinkles, it's also helping with texture, pigmentation, acne, all of the above. Making sure you find the right one and you know how often to use it and when to use it is going to be the key as well as consistency and getting that nice glowing skin. If this helped you understand retinoids and how to choose the right one for your skin, make sure you hit like and subscribe for more videos. You guys can also find me on Instagram and TikTok at Dr. Alexandra Brown. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.